Today, we're discussing a city rich in culture. This place may have notorious traffic and humid tropical weather, but where else in the States will you find authentic Caribbean food, beautiful beaches, and an infectious nightlife all on one shore? We're talking, of course, of one of the world's most popular tourist attractions, from luxurious hotels to the best damn street food you'll ever have. Wake yourself up with a colada and get ready to sweat, because we're going to Miami, Florida. Hey, I'm Jacob, and welcome to Destinations Explained, a fun series we do that dives into destinations from around the world. If you watched us before, welcome back. And if you're new here, it's great to have you. If you haven't already, like this video, watch until the end, and down below, recommend which destination we should do next. Here we go. Miami was officially incorporated as a city in the late 19th century, named for the Miami River derived from the Miami, the historic name of Lake Okeechobee and the Native Americans that lived around it. The Magic City is noted as the only major city in the United States founded by a woman, Julia Tuttle, a wealthy widow from Ohio. Like the birth of most U.S. cities, Miami's population sparked growth after linking to a railroad, all thanks to Julia, after she convinced railroad tycoon Henry Flagger to extend his Florida East Coast Railway to the region. In the 1900s, it didn't take long for Miami to gain traction as one of the hottest vacation spots to visit, after word got out about their hotels, beaches, and nightclubs. But some things are too good to be true, as Miami is an easy target for massive hurricanes and the Great Depression only made things worse. However, World War II came along and stabilized the economy in Miami due to hundreds of thousands of servicemen training in South Florida. The war ended and many of these servicemen returned to Miami, pushing another development boom by 1950. On top of that, a decade later, the Cuban dictator Fidel Castro came to power, and many wealthy Cubans sought refuge in Miami, further increasing the city's population and culture. Today, Miami is now a major tourism hub for international visitors. Because of its low latitude, Miami has a tropical climate, perfect for a year-round destination. Summer temperatures average a high of 87 degrees Fahrenheit to a low of 78 degrees Fahrenheit, while winter can average a high of 74 degrees Fahrenheit to a low of 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Miami is nicknamed the capital of Latin America and is one of the largest majority minority cities in the United States with about 73 of the population being of Hispanic and Latino descent. The city of Miami has a population just shy of 500,000 people. However, the Miami metropolitan area contains over 6 million people. It's no surprise that the city has hosted 11 Super Bowls, attracts multiple Hollywood film settings, and, well, traffic they have terrible traffic. And their metro doesn't exactly fix that problem either. But anyway, it's time to embrace the humidity of South Florida and see what this fast paced and busy metropolis has to offer. Let's start with some go-to tourist attractions. Not far south of Miami, you'll find Pinecrest Gardens, a beautiful botanical garden offering a unique blend of history, recreational facilities, and visual arts. Pinecrest Gardens celebrates and conserves South Florida's rich botanical heritage, offering over a thousand varieties of rare and exotic tropical plants and palm trees. This place is perfect for families and kid-friendly attractions, such as a splash and play water playground, a petting zoo, a large playground area, and family movie nights. And you can't forget Sundays during the high season where you'll find the Pinecrest Gardens Farmer's Market. A few months ago, we covered the Barton Springs Pool a crown jewel of Austin, Texas. But that's not the only man-made spring-fed pool in the United States. We're talking about the one and only Venetian Pool, a historic public swimming pool in Coral Gables, keeping locals and tourists cool since 1924. The pool occupies a shallow quarry, displacing around 820,000 gallons of fresh water daily from an underground aquifer making it the largest freshwater pool in the country. Of course, the aquifer is not the only feature that enhances a visitor's experience. There's two cascading waterfalls that provide a scenic backdrop, as well as the cave-like grottos offering a fun experience for swimmers. Don't forget to check out their website to book your reservation for a low and reasonable price. Vizcaya Museum and Gardens is easily one of the best things Miami has to offer. 
This European-inspired estate has endured the sunny shores of southern Florida since 1914. Sitting in the Coconut Grove neighborhood, this estate includes extensive Renaissance gardens, a native woodland landscape, and historic Italian furniture. It's the former estate of businessman James Deering, who earned his fortune from the success of his family's manufacturing company. This guy was basically the Great Gatsby of Florida. We may have missed out on some bangers of a party, but the estate remains pretty much how Deering left it. A beautiful and serene oasis, reminding us just how little money we have. Bayside Marketplace is a two-story open-air shopping center located downtown, offering the full Miami experience. Latin food, local arts, and beautiful settings. If you've ever been to San Francisco, you'd notice a lot of similarities with Pier 39 and Fisherman's Wharf. At Bayside Marketplace, you can enjoy Miami seafood, people watching, and tropical cocktails. Alongside the marketplace, you'll find Bayfront Park, a 32-acre park beside the bay with a popular amphitheater, landmark fountain, and many community events. With over a hundred shops, boutiques, restaurants, and bars, all neighboring an alluring serene park, there's no question why this is the most visited attraction in Miami. Wynwood Walls, established in 2009 by legendary visionary Tony Goldman, is an outdoor museum of international street art. What was once windowless warehouse buildings became a giant canvas to bring the Wynwood neighborhood the greatest street art ever seen in one place. Since its inception, the Wynwood Walls program has seen over 50 artists representing 16 countries and have covered over 80,000 square feet of walls. The walls have since migrated to include murals outside the park in the surrounding neighborhood as well. Wynwood is so dense with murals these days that it's getting hard to find an empty wall. This neighborhood has put Miami on the map as one of the street art capitals of the world, and it's a must-see location. Lastly, for tourist attractions in Miami, we recommend going to another city. Of course, this city is connected by bridges to mainland Miami and probably the whole reason you're visiting. Miami Beach is on a barrier reef across Biscayne Bay, and its sandy, sunny beaches from South Beach continue all the way north along the coast of Florida. As Miami has pretty temperate weather, the beaches will be active all year round. South Beach is where all the action is. And if you've seen movies like Scarface or The Birdcage, you may already have a great visual of what this place has to offer. Ocean side dining, beautiful architecture, world-class hotels, and a nightlife that starts when the sun's still up. For the nature and recreational section of the video, why don't we start with the obvious? We're speaking, of course, about the largest subtropical wilderness in the United States, Everglades National Park. There's no city worth visiting that's closer, so you might as well put down your mojito and take a day trip to the third largest national park in the lower 48 states. From Miami, take the northern entrance to Shark Valley Visitor Center and get ready for over a million acres of tropical wilderness. Now, we know what you're thinking. A big floating piece of metal with a big ol' fan on the back. That's right, it's airboat time. Many airboat tours reside in the park like Everglades Nature Tours or Tiger Tail Airboat Tours, but you don't need a swamp boat to get around. The park has several walking trails, guided tram tours, and bike rentals. Personally, we recommend checking out the Shark Valley Observation Tower and hiking the Shark Valley Trail. Lots of helpful links and notes will be down in the description below. A trip to Miami isn't complete without a stop in Key Biscayne, a town on a barrier island just southeast of Miami. The town itself is sandwiched between Crandon Park and Bill Baggs Cape Florida State Park. The village is densely packed with quaint neighborhoods, palm tree lined streets, and luxurious resorts. But hey, we're in the nature section of the video, and there's some pretty cool recreational things to do here besides dropping $900 on a hotel room. On the southern end of Key Biscayne lies Bill Baggs Cape Florida State Park. This park has more than a mile of sandy Atlantic beachfront where snorkeling and swimming is possible. We recommend hiking the Lighthouse Loop, which includes the Cape Florida Light, the oldest standing structure in Greater Miami. On your way back to Miami, stop in Grandin Park on the north side of the island and walk the beach or lounge on a pristine shore. Sunsets are particularly amazing to watch here. South Point Park is a 17-acre urban park in the aforementioned South Beach neighborhood. 
offering panoramic views of Biscayne Bay, Fisher Island, downtown Miami, and the Atlantic Ocean. Lay out a blanket and catch some shade under the palm trees and picnic with a couple of medianoches. Let the kids cool off at the public water playground and most importantly, stroll out to South Point Pier and watch the massive cruise ships depart from Port Miami. The park is designed to accommodate both active and passive recreation and we heavily recommend visiting the park as an intermission and a chance to take a break from this wild city. Now, it's that time of the video where we get on a call with a true local and see what recommendations they have. So, let's jump over to a call with our friend Pola from Culture Crusaders and see what fun local things she has to recommend. Hey Pola, thanks for joining us today. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good. So, we are in the nature section of our video and we are looking for something fun and naturey and even recreational to do. Do you have any suggestions? Oh man, yeah. One of my things is that a lot of the times when you see Miami on like movies and TV, we always just see the beach. We never really see just how green Miami is and how many trees there are everywhere. One of the most beautiful places I think in Miami for you to go where you feel like you're just completely lost in nature is Olita River State Park. It's in North Miami, North Miami Beach, and it's actually the largest state park in the country that's within a metropolitan area. So, you know, it's surrounded on all sides by city and highways, but it's gargantuan, over a hundred acres of just natural waterways and mangroves, and it's, it's really, really awesome. That sounds amazing. Anything recreational you could do there? I mean, they have a visitor center, like an outdoor center there, and you can rent mountain bikes, there's mountain bike trails, hiking, like rent kayaks and paddle boards and just go snorkeling and swimming. I mean, you can really get your Pocahontas on and just go through all the canals and mangroves and just like get a little bit of a taste of an Everglades feel. And you can even go from there to the ocean and back. So it's really awesome. That sounds amazing. Is there anything more just like nature and a good place to picnic in the Miami area you could suggest? Yeah, for sure. So. Um, actually down one of my favorite drives in Miami. It's Old Cutler Road. It's the oldest street in Miami. There's a botanical garden called Fairchild Tropical Botanical Garden. It's named after Dr. Fairchild, who's actually arguably the greatest botanist that ever lived in the United States. I mean, he, he was responsible for bringing cherry blossoms, and avocados and mangoes and kale and quinoa to the United States. So they named this like 82 acre botanical garden after him and it's it's more quaffed and tamed, but it's it's absolutely beautiful. And they have, you know, public art installations and events. And, you know, it, it's it's from the 1920s, which for a lot of people is really not that old. But for Miami, that's, you know, over 100 years old. And it's really awesome. Wow, Paula, those two are great. I think a lot of people will uh, want to check those out for sure. Thank you again for joining us and I'll talk to you later. Thanks so much for having me. Don't forget to follow Culture Crusaders on Instagram to help plan your trip. Link down in the description below. Before we continue, let's thank Audible for making these videos possible. We personally find it hard to take the time to sit down and physically read a book. But at the same time, we love books, learning and diving into various topics, especially when researching a new destination. We can imagine some of you feel the same and want to fit books into your busy lives. Audible is the perfect solution with basically the whole world of audiobooks and podcasts right in your ears at all times. Audible offers 30 days for free and a free book. And if you cancel, they even let you keep the book. So please go to www.audibletrial.com slash venture or click the link in the description and try it out. It's one of the main ways we make money with our videos. So even if you don't like the service and cancel, know that you helped support us without spending a dime and you get a free book out of it. Once again, that's audibletrial.com slash venture or click the link in the description below. Now back to the video. We think it comes as no surprise that Miami has incredible food. From its authentic Caribbean cooking to creative chef-inspired cuisine, and boy, does Finca Table and Tap capture all that into one kitchen. Owner Eileen Andrade fuses her Cuban heritage with Peruvian and Korean influences for creative dishes in this homey gastro pub. Where else can you find a dinner that starts with fried pork belly with sweet sriracha glaze, then follows with a braised oxtail mushroom risotto for a main dish? These are combinations that on paper shouldn't work, but your taste buds might tell you otherwise. Moulin Rose Cake and Bakery Shop, sorry if we pronounce that wrong, 
is a family owned and operated business in Sunset. A must try in Miami are pastelitos, made with layers of puff pastry and usually filled with sweet or savory fillings. These are a staple as a South Florida breakfast, but are equally delicious no matter the time of day. Or try some ham croquettes, a tasty deep fried treat filled with a creamy bechamel sauce. Whether served for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, croquetas have long been iconic in Cuban bakeries. The debates are pretty heated here in the 305 on which bakery is the best, but we're quite confident that you'll be satisfied with this one. If you think having arguments over the best Cuban bakery in Miami is petty, what do you expect when we're trying to decide what the best Cuban restaurant is? Well, the clear answer from a local may be mi abuela, but today we're going to keep it vanilla and recommend <laughs> vanilla. But today we're going to keep it basic and recommend Versailles Restaurant Cuban Cuisine. This iconic landmark has been the perfect go-to for tourists trying Cuban cuisine for the first time, all within the historic neighborhood of Little Havana on Calle Ocho, aka 8th Street. Versailles is a cafeteria, restaurant, and bakery all in one. Come in the morning for a cortado and pastelitos, or stop by at lunch for an original Cuban sandwich. Another Latin American cuisine you need to indulge is Venezuelan arepas, and the spot to find the best is at Doggy's Arepa Bar. Arepas are crisp fried corn flour cakes filled with flavor-packed goodness. They stuff them with shredded beef, marinated churrasco, or fried pork belly, and the list goes on. Another classic dish is the cachapa, a traditional corn pancake semi-sweet with queso de mano inside and topped with cream and white shredded cheese. This unassuming restaurant serving traditional Venezuelan entrees will no doubt leave you and your friends satisfied. Damn, Jacob, that's a lot of Latin American food. Got anything for us uncultured folks who just want like a pizza or a burger? Maybe, but we're not out of the woods yet. Another culture thriving in Miami are our friendly Creole and French speaking neighbors in Haiti. And they have a whole neighborhood in Miami, plainly named Little Haiti. In this district, you'll find a local black owned restaurant called Chef Creole Seasoned Restaurant. We're talking oxtail, conch salad, pork griot, fried chicken, all spiced to perfection. And wash it all down with a homemade fruit punch or a bottle of prestige beer. Chef Creole has been featured on cooking shows including Anthony Bourdain, The Travel Channel, Wong's World, and more. This is how we do business, baby! With open air seating and a smoky grill out front, it doesn't get any more authentic than this. Maybe you're not a fan of Caribbean food, and you just want to see a menu full of things you can actually pronounce. Well, look no further than Yardbird Southern Table and Bar. We're talking sandwiches, shrimp and grits, deviled eggs, any comforting food from the South you can name. However, the real takeaway about this place is their chicken and waffles. Savory sweet cheddar cheese waffle, chilled spiced watermelon, and both a honey hot sauce and a bourbon maple syrup. Whether you come by for brunch, lunch, or supper, there's no doubt that you Southern food lovers will enjoy this. In the heart of North Beach, you'll find our favorite family operated Italian restaurant, George's Restaurant and Lounge. The pasta, bread, pizza, and desserts are all made from scratch. Even the limoncello is homemade. George's has everything you'd expect from a classic Italian restaurant, a chandelier lit, white tablecloth dining room, and even outdoor seating. So what makes this place worth mentioning on such a short list? Three words, ravioli di aragasta, lobster ravioli, served in their exquisite homemade lobster cream sauce. Get this with a side salad and a glass of your favorite wine, and you'll be telling your friends about this place for a long time. For the last restaurant on our list, come and enjoy the contemporary mix of Italian and French favorites with a twist at Cote Gourmet. This black owned establishment is run by the distinguished chef Amina, a Senegalese cooking sensation with a prolific resume. From kitchens in France to Italy, to yachts to the freaking Prince of Monaco. Inspired by our travels, Chef Amina will take you from native Senegal across five continents to Miami. The typical meal includes three courses, a simple starter, a main dish, and then cheese and fruit for dessert. French cooking may seem sophisticated, but it's not. It's ultimately about creating a harmonious dish that elevates the quality of the main ingredient. It's about building flavors. Visiting Cote Gourmet will undoubtedly be a memorable experience.
Now, this list can go on and on, but we have to continue. Before we do though, we have to add that Miami is also home to authentic Peruvian ceviche. Since a lot of locals tend to watch our videos, we'll leave it up to them to recommend the best place to find ceviche in Miami in the comments below. Let's take a moment to recommend our must-see coffee shops. Checking out Wynwood Walls in the morning? Stop by Panther Coffee and grab a macadamia milk latte and stroll around the decorative art community of Wynwood. Panther Coffee is a Miami-based specialty coffee company and roaster. The owners opened over a decade ago with their 30 years of combined experience in the coffee industry. They noticed that although there was an abundance of Cuban-style coffee shops, the specialty coffee scene was non-existent. If you're looking for a coffee shop specifically for Cuban coffee, then head back to Little Havana to La Colada Gourmet, the house of Cuban coffee. This is the best place on Calle Ocho to enjoy your coffee. Mixing liquor, creams, spices, and dairy, creating flavors you never experienced before. You might think it's a place to get your ordinary Cuban espresso, but look a little deeper and you'll notice the craftsmanship in obtaining the perfect sip of coffee like no other. This is the ultimate hole in the wall experience. Before we move to the last section of the video, we need to talk dessert. Way down the never ending Biscayne Boulevard, you'll find Cream Parlor. Do you like healthy homemade lunch and dinner creations paired with overwhelming ice cream and sweets? Well, this may be the only place in Miami that serves it. We're talking Nutella hot chocolate heaven to their famous unicorn poop. The atmosphere is so lovely and the treats are sure to satisfy your sweet tooth with the amount of options Cream Parlor has to offer. The nightlife and bar scene in Miami is one to behold, and it's perhaps the main reason you're coming to visit Miami. And boy, do we have a great place to start. Broken Shaker at Freehand Miami, back in Miami Beach in the Freehand Hostel. Escape to the backyard oasis and revel in the vibey poolside bar while sipping on handcrafted cocktails composed of infusions made from garden herbs and spices, fresh pressed produce, and exotic ingredients from around the world. Starting here will make you feel right at home, as if you were invited to your friend's summer backyard party, here at this laid back hidden gem. Ocean Drive might seem like a must in South Beach's scandalous nightlife, but let us speak not so easy of this speakeasy in the Styles Hotel, Swizzle Rum and Bar Drinkery. Tucked away down a short staircase, you'll find this hidden craft cocktail bar offering sophisticated libations and a selection of more than 150 rums in a low-lit, intimate space. The decor boasts walls lined with photos highlighting the history of rum that is meant to be museum-like. The mixed drinks are beautiful, smooth tasting, and highly potent, including a large focus on classic and contemporary cocktails, as well as refreshing tropical drinks. This is the perfect late night place to visit for couples and you'll no doubt feel like you're back in the Prohibition era. Heading back across the bay on the edge of Wynwood, you'll find Lanyap, a cozy New Orleans style wine bar. If you like wine, charcuterie boards, and live music, then this place is for you. Hang outside in their light strong yard that all other patios should aspire to be or get cozy inside to get a good view of the live music. This isn't your average quiet library like wine bar. This place is poppin and vibrant. The moment you step in Lanyap, the infectious music is sure to draw you in at one of the coolest nightlife spots you'll visit. Miami's brewery scene is taking off and in Miami's most creative neighborhood, you'll find Vezisor Brewing. They pride themselves with craft beer with Latin American roots and options like beer cocktails, micheladas, and food trucks outside. Vezisor's consists of a variety of innovative brews that range from craft lagers and IPAs to sours and the Brazilian Chope. There's not much else to say here. They got the vibes, they got the brews, now get yourself over there. Our friend Pola actually recommended a few other breweries worth visiting. So if you're looking for something else, I'll put these down in the description below. Whether you're coming down for a boozy beach filled vacation or an adventure full of nature and culture, there's no doubt that Miami has it all. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell so you can catch us on our next destination.
Before you go, we make our living creating free content and resources for you, and it's made possible by viewers supporting us through sponsors like Audible. If you sign up for a free trial through our link, audibletrial.com venture, you'll get any audiobook of your choosing for free, and we'll get a small commission so we can keep making entertaining videos. If you end up canceling your membership, it costs you nothing and you get to keep the audiobook. So at the end of the day, you could get a free audiobook, support us, and not even have to pay anything if you try it out through our link. Our current favorite title is Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss, which was just released in audiobook form. It's all about the habits and rituals of some of the world's most successful people. So if you wouldn't mind, go get a free book through our link. It helps more than you know, and we very much appreciate it.